if you're using pallet and point of sale and you have serialized items in your store, you're at the right place. Hey, uh, good morning, everybody. This is Charles Owen from Pallet and Data Corporation. Today, we're going to be going through a webinar here. It will be recorded, so you'll be able to watch it uh, anytime uh, later today and beyond. So if you want to share this with anybody, this is really going to be an instruction of just going through very rapidly through the uh, serialization feature and then also showing how we've now incorporated the serialization process using an RF gun when you're actually in the in the uh, field or in the aisles. So what we're going to learn today is uh, what is product serialization? I think this is a no-brainer. I'll go very quickly over most of these. Some common scenarios, how serialization works in Paladin. That's the real meat and potatoes. So we'll go through identifying serialized items, receiving serialized items in the inventory, receiving serialized items in the inventory using an RF unit or RF terminal or RF gun, and also selling serialized items, managing serialized numbers, getting reports of serialized items, and then how to show how to do transfers of serialized items in multi-store. This is about these are about 45 slides here. I'm going to go as rapidly as possible. I don't want to miss anything. So I'm going to be uh, going through these slides. If you need me to slow down, please download the recorded version and just hit the pause button because it's hard to hit the pause on me in live. So we're going to go ahead and uh, get into the first slide. What is product serialization? I think we all know this. Any item that has a unique ID or, or serial number when it comes in, like a chainsaw, water heater, refrigerator, mower, I mean, those are just some examples. Uh, common serialization scenarios, you know, it's good for managing warranty coverage, maintaining ownership records, so you'll know who purchased what when based on that serial, serial number, maintaining ownership records, supplier traceability and reporting so if the supplier wants to see if uh, you've been selling certain items and uh, you know for warranty purposes or ownership records we've got all that information in paladin and then enhanced accountability so how serialization works in paladin specifically we let you maintain and track serial numbers for any product in your store you just have to identify that product as a serialized item under the PO receive, serial numbers are added when items are received. Now available using the RF unit. If you have the 15 line display activated, which there I'll have information on where to find information about that later. Invoice and quote when a serialized item is sold or returned, the cashier will be required to put that information in at the time of the sale. Inventory, a current list of in stock serial numbers and detailed serial number history and status is, a, is maintained for each inventory item. And then you can get a complete report of all your serialized products, all their serial numbers, including the current serial number, their disposition, state, and status. So very complete. How it works is Paladin has incorporated multiple safeguards to help you maintain exactly one serial number. So we don't allow you to do duplicate serialized numbers. And uh, we maintain detailed serial number history for every serial number event and status change. And then we track not only the serial number, but also the date received and the receiving cost of each serialized item. Very important to know. So getting into our next topic, identifying serialized items in the inventory module. So what do we have to do? You just have to go in the inventory and click a little button here. So you're going to go to the inventory screen. That is Alt-3 or press the inventory module at the top of the screen. And then you'll move over to the general tab. Under the general tab, in about the middle of the page, there's a serial number checkbox. You'll just check that box, and now that item will be required to have serial numbers. Receiving items with serial numbers in the PO module. So if you're in the PO module and you're receiving an items manually, you will just go ahead and go into the PO module, into the receive PO mode, bring up that, um, that purchase order where you'll have the different serialized items. And you'll notice there will be a serial number in red. In the receive column, you'll see here uh, about 
uh, three quarters of the way over on each of these, you'll see it says serial number in red. It means red is warning that indicates a PO item needs a serial number. So what you'll do here is you'll just simply highlight the item, right click, and when you right click, there'll be a button to add serial number. And then when you're ready, you can move to the next serialized item and you can put in that serial number. So again, you just right click, hit add serial number, it opens add remove serial numbers window and you'll be able to, uh, to see this here. It says add three serial numbers because there are a quantity of three to be received. As you add a serial number and you know put a serial number in the enter serial number here and hit add, it will reduce this to add two serial numbers. You put in a second one, it'll be reduced to add one serial number. And when it's all satisfied, uh, it, will, it will no longer say add serial numbers and you can just hit finished. Receiving items with serial numbers, uh, you can see here, once you satisfy that serial number, it turns from red to black. And you can see that the one above here has a serial number assigned, the one below does not. So we put the labels there to make it easy. Also, if you happen to have a, a PO that's been partially received and you receive serial numbers, it's gonna show you that they have been received but it hasn't been finalized yet. So once you receive that um, that PO, uh, and it's going to go ahead and uh, show you the the status, and it will change the status to um, whatever received or in process or uh, sold or what have you. So serial numbers previously received on a partially received PO will appear in light gray with the status of received. All right, then uh, you must resolve all serial number warnings before you can actually process and receive a PO. You're gonna get this message here. It says a serial number must be entered for every serialized item received. Click OK, and it's gonna bring up that box so you can put the serial number in right then and there. Now you can also receive, this is new. This is This is different from the serialized webinar that I did about four years ago. This is an addition. So with the RF unit under the receiving PO non-EDI mode, using the 15 line display, you'll be able to be prompted to add a serial number. So there's more information here. You can see the KBA RF unit 15 line functionality. If you're using the six line functionality today and you want to use this feature, you must upgrade to the 15 line functionality. Everybody has the the uh, the right to do this, and everybody has the capability to do this. You just need to follow the KBA. And uh, let's see. So it comes up on the actual unit itself, and if there's a serialized item that is scanned during the receive PO process, it'll say enter serial number, and then you'll just type in that serial number. I you can be an alphanumeric as well with special characters. So uh, you can put it in any which way you, you like. And then uh, receiving the PO, you're gonna go ahead and go into the receive mode on the computer after you've received them, um, after you've gone ahead and, and put in the serial numbers using the RF gun. And you'll just, uh, you'll just pull up the particular purchase order and double click on it and open it up to, to receive those items. Uh, and it just tells you you must review the RFPO received quantities. And this purchase order contains item quantities that were counted during the RFPO receiving process. Click OK to review. It just walks you through the process. Now there was just happened to be one item on there that needed to be reviewed that was received during this process because I only had one item in my purchase order. And then you would just confirm that everything is copacetic. The quantity ordered. Um, and the quantity scanned, they match up. So in addition to the non-EDI PO receiving, we also have EDI inbound receiving. So if you receive your orders in Paladin through your supplier automatically through a, an electronic invoice, you can go ahead and receive all those items, including serialized items, 
using the RF gun. So you would just basically, as you pull it off the truck, you would count it. This is an optional feature, and uh, you can either blind receive and look for the anomalies, or you can, in this case, you can scan each and every item as it comes off the truck if you really want to, to do that. Again, it's an optional thing that you can do. And the same information will come up as you scan a serialized item. It's gonna ask you to fulfill or enter that serial number. In that point, um, from the RF unit, you select uh, inbound receiving to get to this on the RF gun, Sketch, scan each physically received item. When prompted to enter a serial number, you'll enter that serial number. This just walks through that process. And then you would go into the inventory module and the bottom you select EDI and you click reporting. And in the EDI reporting window, you can select the EDI invoice that is associated with the received items, then click the inbound receiving under, with this little blue square around it or rectangle. And then what you're going to get here is uh, you're going to compare the quantities you entered on the RF unit with the EDI invoice quantities. And it's all going to show you right here, the shipped quantity and the received quantity. And you can edit these values. So this, again, is a different kind of a different process for receiving. It requires that you scan everything using the RF gun. But during this process, it will prompt you for the serial numbers. All right, so selling items with serial numbers. So we just showed you how to receive them, multiple different ways you can receive items. Every item that you receive that is required to have a serial number will prompt for a serial number. On the selling side, it does the same thing. It's a lot easier because now you already have the serial number in there. So all you do is scan the item to sell. And then it says, okay, here are the available serial numbers. These are the products that we have in stock. Which item are you selling? So you would just select the, the serial number that you're selling, hit select, and it would put it under selected serial numbers. And that's all there is to it. After that, it's going to, uh, if you put in a, if you manually enter a serial number that you, let's say you don't find it on the list, you enter or you scan a serial number that doesn't match anything that's available, you can with manager approval, manually enter serial numbers at the time of the sale if it hasn't been input. And there might be certain circumstances where you didn't have the serial number before, but you do now upon the selling event, and now you can just do this with one false swoop. You know, you enter the serial number, it'll add the serial number, and it will apply it to this sale. But you do need manager approval and authority to be able to do this. You can see that if you selected an, a quantity of two and you selected two serial numbers, it actually shows the serial numbers were added. The serial number prompt under the quantity is now black. So that means that those two have been satisfied, but there's one below that still needs to be satisfied where the serial number was not added. So for this uh, BTU portable, you can enter uh, or right click and enter the serial number. And in this case, uh, to enter it, you just right click and hit add serial number. And then you just add the serial number and you're good to go. So uh, selling items to serial, you must resolve all serial number warnings before you can process an invoice. So that's just, it's gonna give you this message. If you still have a red serial number and has not been satisfied, has not been entered into the invoice, it will give you this message. Click OK to update the first item with a serial number warning. And um, yeah, easy enough. And then here's what the what the invoice might look like if you're doing a three inch receipt. Of course, if you're doing a full page eight and a half by 11 receipt, it's gonna look slightly different, but you're gonna see the serial numbers listed right on the invoice. And it's also, there to recall at any time. So you, when you're doing reports, you can specify a particular serial number and you'll, find, you'll go right to that invoice where that serial number was used. Very easy to reference. When the customer returns a serialized item, it's gonna show you a list of sold serial numbers and you're gonna select the one that had been sold and enter that. The return cannot be processed until a serial number is selected. So managing an item serial numbers 
in the inventory module. So there's a convenient little button here at the bottom of the inventory screen that says F6 serial number and alternate part number. You just click on that serial icon right here in the center, um, that little radio button, and it's going to show you all the serial numbers. Now, if you want to continue to see more information, this shows you all of the available ones. This shows you it's available, but now you also have these two other buttons, View in Excel and History, to see more information. So if you click View in Excel, it's going to basically take that information in the window and put it in an Excel document. It's, you know, it's going to give you a list of all the available serial numbers. But if you press the history button, it's going to show you the current status, state, disposition, uh, event of what happened when. Everything is documented. Anytime it goes into an invoice, comes out of an invoice, every time it's received, every time it's sold. I mean, everything's going to be in here. So you can see it says these are available on the bottom. These two are in process, which means somebody could be on another terminal having that item in an active invoice that has not yet been finalized when it's sold it'll say sold so this report is very complete and you can see all kinds of information uh, including the po number on the receiving event as well as the invoice id on the sales event and all this information is very easy to get to and then um the number of available serial numbers should equal your stock on hand. If it doesn't, you're going to get this little yield button with an exclamation mark. And that just means that, hey, it says you got 38 in here, um, but you don't necessarily have 38, 38 serial numbers for, for this uh, particular inventory item. Or it could be the inverse, where you have 38 listed as stock on hand and you have 41 serial numbers either one of those scenarios it's going to want you to resolve these issues it will continue working it's not going to be a problem but at some point you're going to need to go in and uh, make this correct so reporting you can go into the serial number list report in that um, you just go into your reports section under inventory and you will be able to see a full list of all serialized items. It's gonna give you the serialized part number and alternate part numbers, the description, the serial numbers, one per line, serial numbers added or received date, the current serial number status, whether it's available, sold, in process, what have you, supplier cost, when serial number was received, and re received PO number, if available. And the report is you go into the serial number list report, which is available under the reports module in the inventory general category. So you go to reports, inventory, general, and at the bottom of the list, it'll say serial number list. And that's going to give you that information. You can also filter the report by a part number, range, department, supplier, class, subclass, or location range. In multi-store, very quickly, those of you who have multi-store, you can do a transfer. And when you do a transfer, it's going to want to associate it with a particular item. Uh, scenario one, the store creates a PO to transfer an item from another store. When the item is received, the store must select the item's serial number from the other store's available serial number list. And we'll just put that list right up here for you to see. Scenario two, a store uses the F7 transfer feature, ribbon on the bottom of the inventory module, to transfer an item from another store. So you hit transfer on the bottom window, I believe it's F7, yes, F7, and that will bring up um, the different uh, availability of products at the, the other stores. And the receiving store must select a specific serial number to transfer. The PO that is created includes the selected serial number in a note, in the note field. So as you know, when you create a transfer, it transfers that cost of good from one store to the next. And along with that, it's going to be towing that serial number. And uh, here it is. There's your, uh, your purchase order right there. It's going to show the requesting serial number. 
and uh, when the item is received, the serial number is automatically selected on the PO, but it can be changed. So if they decide to, oh, we didn't send that one because that was already sold, but we're going to send another one, you can go ahead and make that change during the transfer process. Well, that was a lot. Again, like I said, it's about 45 slides, and we did that and knocked that out in 20 minutes. The really compelling information in that I showed you was the RF receiving of the serialized numbers, which you can either scan or enter and type in during the receiving process. That's during the PO receiving for non-EDI and then the inbound receiving for EDI. Uh, our next webinar will be on August 6th. We don't quite know at this point what it is, or at least I don't know, but we should know shortly and it will you'll be uh, receiving an email on that. As always, it was great to, uh, to see you here, learning more about Paladin, and hopefully this will be relevant for what you're doing at the store, and you'll be able to leverage this information. If there are any questions, you can just put those in the question area. I don't see any questions at this point. I'll give you a minute or so. In the meantime, there are several places where you can go for more information like retail science which can be found if you go to our website and then click on the other websites at the top of the screen you'll see retail science you'll also see the knowledge base articles or or help as well which you can go to also if you wanted to just go directly to those documents especially the webinars just go to portal.paladinpos.com and put in slash webinars and if you're at home and you don't have the the system, the Paladin system up and running. Again, you don't have to go to the help menu in Paladin. You can go directly to portal.paladinpos.com. Uh, I don't see any questions. Oh, uh, question. Here we go. Let's see if I can read it here. When identifying SKUs that need a serial number, would we have to manually add the serial number checkbox to the SKU, or is there the ability to do a bulk import export? That is a very good question. And actually, uh, if you have a list of items that need to be serialized, and it's a substantial list, and you would like us to go in and input a checkbox globally throughout your inventory for, say, you know, 500 items, we can do that. Uh, as far as you go, I don't think you have the capability to globally do to enter that checkbox under serialized number. But here's the deal. If you've got that many items that you need to do, I would take it one by one because you're going to have to enter those serial, serial numbers. Now, you can enter those into a spreadsheet to make it easier so you don't have to go to one screen after the next and Paladin. Just enter a spread, uh, spreadsheet, enter the serial number, enter the product uh, ID or, or uh, product part number, and we can go ahead and put that information in for you. So if you go ahead and you check that box, serialize or serial, then it'll instantly have that yield sign next to the stock on hand because whatever you have stock on hand is going to show as not having a serial number associated with it. So it's going to require that when you sell that item from that moment forward. So it's good if you just go ahead and uh, you know do the labor up front, get all those serial numbers into a spreadsheet or probably easier just to do it one by one. You know, you've, you've, got, you've got an item that you want to sell the serialized, go ahead and mark it, enter the serial numbers, go to your next item, check the serial box, enter those serial numbers, go to the next check box, because it's something that it's, it's gonna take time no matter how you slice this. If you've got 500 items that need to be serialized, then I would start an effort to, to do that, but it's, it's an ebb and flow thing that's gonna happen all day long because you got, you got parts coming in and parts going out. So that's why it's important to set it up one by one. That, that way, every time you set one up, that one's good. When you receive it, you'll enter the serial number. When you sell it, you'll enter the serial number. But on items that haven't been earmarked to serial, serial yet, um, those aren't going to cause an issue. So very good question. Uh, I appreciate that. And hopefully that uh, that helped. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. I'm gonna go ahead and sign off. As always, 
Uh, thank you so much. Be safe and uh, God bless.